My name is Dr. John Piper from the University of Toronto and St. Michael's Hospital. On behalf of my co-authors, Catherine Chan, Paula Dwartzik, Catherine Fries, and Sandra Williams, it is my pleasure to be able to present to you Diabetes Canada 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy. There have been several key changes since the 2013 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy. The 2018 update reinforces the importance of the role of the registered dietitian in diabetes management. New information is also provided in several important key areas. One, the importance of using a transcultural approach to nutrition therapy with the goal of providing culturally congruent nutrition counseling. It is recognized that Canada is a uh, ethnoculturally diverse country expressed in terms of uh, dining habits, food preparation uh, approaches, uh, and distinct foods. We review the importance of addressing and considering these issues in nutrition counseling and the important influence these have on counseling outcomes. Two, the role of various dietary patterns. The 2013 guidelines marked uh, a shift from a focus on single nutrients to a focus on foods and dietary patterns. It is recognized that a focus on single nutrients misses important interactions between different nutrients, between nutrients and foods, and between foods and the dietary patterns in which they're contained. The 2018 update extends and expands uh, beyond the 2013 guidelines providing uh, evidence and reviewing evidence for uh, new uh, dietary patterns. Three, Ramadan, uh, fasting, and diabetes. Traditionally, uh, Muslims with type 1 diabetes and insulin requiring type 2 diabetes have been discouraged from participating in Ramadan fasting. We review the evidence for uh, providing uh, measures to and strategies to improve uh, and reduce the risk of hypo and hyperglycemia uh, in our Muslim patients uh, that wish to um, participate in Ramadan fasting. The nutrition checklist for the 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy is as follows. Refer for nutrition counseling by a registered dietitian. Follow eating well with Canada's food guide. Individualize dietary advice based on values, preferences, and treatment goals. Choose low glycemic index carbohydrate food sources. No alternative dietary patterns for type 2 diabetes. Encourage matching of insulin to carbohydrate in type 1 diabetes. And finally, encourage nutritionally balanced calorie reduced diets in patients with overweight or obesity. The 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy emphasizes three main approaches. One, based on Eating Well with Canada's Food Guide, Dietary Reference Intakes or DRIs for specific nutrients and the derived daily values or DVs. Another based on the traditional uh, macronutrient based approach focusing on the quantity and quality of carbohydrate, protein and fat. And the last uh, based on uh, the newer food and dietary pattern based uh, approaches. If we take the first approach, Eating Well with Canada's Food Guide, patients with type 2 diabetes are encouraged to follow Eating Well with Canada's Food Guide in order to meet their nutritional uh, goals. Uh, it is acknowledged that the Food Guide is presently undergoing uh, extensive revision, so practitioners and patients are directed to the link uh, for any updates. Based on the same approach, patients with type 2 diabetes can use the percent daily value or percent DV to meet their nutritional goals. If we take the example provided on the slide of Cracker A versus Cracker B, one can use the percent daily value column on the right hand side of the nutrition facts table to select the cracker, in this case Cracker B, that provides the least amount of saturated and trans fat and sodium and the most amount of fiber. The second approach reviewed in the 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy is a, macronu a traditional macronutrient based approach that allows for different relative proportions of carbohydrate, protein, and fat, as shown in the slide. These data are derived from the dietary reference intakes, uh, acceptable macronutrient distribution range, or AMDRs. Uh, they allow a lot of flexibility for our patients with diabetes, uh, where carbohydrates can provide 45 to 60% of energy, protein 15 to 20% of energy, and fat 20 to 35% of energy, where most of the exchange that allows for that flexibility is between carbohydrate and fat. That was a focus on quantity. Uh, quality may be a more important consideration. It's recognized that different sources of fat um, have markedly different effects and disease associations. We recommend, therefore, that uh, 
patients with diabetes avoid trans fatty acids and decrease their intake of saturated fatty acids to less than 9% of uh, total energy intake. Uh, the focus is not on a reduction alone. One must uh, consider the replacement. It is recommended that a decre the decrease in saturated fat be replaced with uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids uh, in particular from mixed N3 and N6 sources such as nuts, canola oil, soybean oil, and flaxseed. Monounsaturated fatty acids from plant sources, exam examples are extra virgin olive oil, high lake acids, um, sorry, high lake oils, uh, and avocados um, replaced with uh, healthy carbohydrate sources such as whole grains uh, or low glycemic index carbohydrates, which will be reviewed uh, in the subsequent slide. The evidence for this recommendation is based on systematic reviews and meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials of hard clinical outcomes showing that the replacement of saturated fats um, in particular with uh, mixed N3 and 6 sources of polyunsaturated fatty acids are um, reduce um, the risk of cardiovascular events and from uh, large uh, pooled analyses of prospective cohort studies showing that the substitution of uh, extra virgin olive oil, high lake oils, avocados, for example, as plant sources of monounsaturated fatty acids, whole grains, or low glycemic index carbohydrates, for saturated fatty acids are associated with decreased uh, cardiovascular disease. Quality is an equally important consideration for carbohydrate. Uh, patients with type 2 diabetes, um, it is recommended that our patients with type 2 diabetes choose healthy low glycemic index carbohydrates here we have uh, a table um, from our guidelines.diabetes.ca website uh, showing examples of low glycemic index in the left hand column uh, foods. Uh, low GI uh, here is defined as a glycemic index of 55 or less on a glucose scale. The idea is to substitute these foods for high glycemic index foods. So a low GI bread for a high GI bread, a low ce a GI cereal for a high GI cereal, a low GI grain for a high GI grain and so on so that uh, the overall pattern of the diet becomes a, a low glycemic index dietary pattern. The um, evidence on which this uh, recommendation is based comes from systematic reviews and meta-analyses uh, of randomized controlled trials showing that low glycemic index dietary interventions uh, result in greater glycemic and metabolic control and need for uh, medications. Uh, evidence also comes from uh, systematic reviews and meta-analyses of prospective cohort studies um, showing that high glycemic index um, diets are associated with higher risk of uh, cardiovascular disease um, or the reciprocal lower glycemic index diets are associated with less uh, cardiovascular disease. Glycemic index is one aspect of carbohydrate quality Another aspect can be defined based on dietary fiber. It is recommended that our patients with diabetes consume uh, to, uh, a total fiber consumption of 30 to 50 grams per day, where greater than uh, one third, which is 10 to 20 grams per day, come from uh, the viscous uh, soluble fibers. Uh, examples of uh, viscous soluble fibers uh, to be emphasized include oats, example steel cut oats, oat bran, um, cereals and breads, uh, barley, um, so example barley soups and bop barley, uh, psyllium which can be found in uh, all brand buds with psyllium for example and some other cereal products as well as Metamucil, uh, konjac manin which can be found as part of konjac noodles, uh, pulses which include beans, peas, chickpeas and lentils, uh, vegetables such as eggplant and okra and uh, temperate climate fruits such as apples, berries and uh, citrus fruit. The evidence for this uh, recommendation comes from uh, systematic reviews and meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials which show that uh, high fiber interventions uh, where at least a third of the fiber come from viscous fiber um, as well as interventions focused specifically on uh, these different types of viscous fibers show uh, advantages for uh, hemoglobin A1C and um, overall metabolic control. Um, evidence. There's also evidence from systematic reviews and analyses of prospective cohort studies showing that total of fiber intake, uh, irrespective of fiber type, is associated with 
decreased uh, cardiovascular um, events. Another aspect of uh, carbohydrate quality um, is a food-based approach. Uh, for example, uh, increasing the intake of pulses, uh, another being the increasing the intake of whole grains, and another being increasing the intake of fruit and vegetables. For each of these, there is evidence from systematic reviews and meta-analyses of uh, prospective cohort studies showing that these foods, higher intakes of these foods is associated with less uh, disease outcomes, in particular cardiovascular disease. There's also evidence for, uh, from systematic reviews of randomized controlled trials, uh, of randomized controlled trials um, that uh, pulse interventions, so interventions focusing on beans, peas, chickpeas, and lentils, either alone or as part of a low glycemic index dietary pattern, uh, improve uh, glycemic control and uh, metabolic parameters, including uh, established lipid targets such as LDL cholesterol, uh, blood pressure, and body weight, and um, evidence, for, uh, same level of evidence um, for whole grains uh, restricted to um, interventions uh, looking at whole grain oats and whole grain barley in particular. Um, interventions uh, related to uh, fruit and vegetables um, have also uh, shown uh, advantage. The largest effects are seen when one takes uh, various uh, dietary approaches such as uh, approaches to fat quality, carbohydrate quality, or specific foods and takes advantage of these by combining them into a, uh, a dietary pattern. Uh, the 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy presents the evidence uh, for several dietary patterns. Uh, two important ones are shown here on this slide, the Mediterranean Dietary Pattern and the Vegetarian and Vegan Dietary Pattern. The Mediterranean Dietary Pattern is a plant-based dietary pattern um, emphasizing um, fruit, vegetables, nuts, um, legumes with a special emphasis on uh, extra virgin um, olive oil, um, fish and seafood and moderate intake of wine while limiting um, meats and, and cheeses, uh, desserts and, and sweets. The evidence in support of the Mediterranean diet is derived uh, mainly from the large uh, PREDIMED trial uh, in, uh, from Spain uh, in nearly 7,500 individuals, high-risk individuals, 50% uh, of whom um, had uh, type 2 diabetes. Um, the trial randomized uh, patients uh, to uh, a Mediterranean diet supplemented with either um, extra virgin olive oil or nuts versus a low-fat control diet and followed them for five years. The result uh, was a uh, 30, approximately 30% 30 reduction in uh, major cardiovascular events um, over five years. Uh, other evidence uh, comes from systematic reviews and analyses of prospective cohort studies showing that adherence to a Mediterranean diet is associated with decre uh, decreased cardiovascular disease, as well as systematic reviews and analyses of randomized controlled trials of intermediate biomarkers showing that a Mediterranean diet uh, d improves um, glycemic control and other um, metabolic uh, parameters um, over the shorter to moderate uh, term. Uh, vegetarian and vegan diets are plant-based diets, um, either um, lacto-ovo um, or um, vegan um, which do, diets which do not include any animal products. The evidence in support of vegetarian and vegan diets is derived from systematic reviews and meta-analyses of prospective cohort studies showing that adherence to a vegetarian or vegan diet is associated with less cardiovascular disease and from systematic reviews and meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials of intermediate biomarkers showing that uh, vegetarian and vegan diets improve glycemic control and other metabolic uh, parameters. Two other uh, dietary patterns reviewed by the 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy um, that are of importance include the Portfolio Dietary Pattern and the DASH Dietary Pattern. The Portfolio Diet uh, represents a portfolio of cholesterol-lowering foods, all of which have um, Health Canada or FDA-approved health claims for uh, cholesterol or cardiovascular uh, risk reduction. Uh, the core foods of the Portfolio Diet include nuts, a handful per day, any type of nuts, uh, or any type of nut, plant protein uh, from uh, soy, beans, peas, chickpeas, and lentils providing 50 grams per day, viscous fibers uh, from oats, barley, and psyllium, uh, from vegetables such as eggplant and okra, and from 
uh, temperate climate fruits providing 20 grams per day and plant sterols from uh, plant sterol enriched margarines and other types of foods providing two grams per day. The evidence uh, supporting uh, the portfolio diet is derived from uh, a series of randomized controlled trials showing that the portfolio dietary pattern when all foods are provided uh, in a head-to-head -head comparison with the early uh, statin uh, lovastatin uh, shows similar uh, reductions in uh, LDL cholesterol as, as, as lovastatin uh, as well as CRP um, as well as um, randomized controlled a multi-center randomized controlled trial of dietary advice showing a significant reduction in LDL cholesterol uh, which was directly proportional to um, adherence to the uh, different components of the portfolio diet. The DASH diet uh, represents uh, dietary approaches to stop hypertension. Uh, this diet emphasizes um, whole grains, um, vegetables, fruit, uh, uh, low-fat dairy, uh, and um, healthy oils um, with a reduction in, uh, in meats. Uh, the main uh, focus is on uh, low-fat dairy and fruits uh, to um, provide um, a source of potassium, uh, magnesium, and calcium to um, reduce uh, blood pressure. Um, the evidence in support of uh, the DASH diet uh, comes uh, from uh, systematic reviews and analyses of prospective cohort studies showing a um, that a dash, adherence to a DASH dietary pattern is associated with reduced cardiovascular events, as well as randomized controlled trials, uh, systematic reviews and meta-analyses of randomized controlled trials showing that a DASH dietary pattern reduces uh, blood pressure, and a DASH dietary pattern uh, specifically in people with type 2 diabetes improves uh, glycemic control, uh, blood pressure, and other metabolic uh, parameters. It must be acknowledged that irrespective of the dietary pattern, weight loss of 5 to 10% of initial body weight relates to improved insulin sensitivity, glycemic control, blood pressure control, and lipid levels. As 80 to 90% of our patients with type 2 diabetes uh, will present as overweight or obese, uh, these patients should be offered a balanced, nutritionally balanced, calorie reduced diet to help them achieve and maintain a lower and healthier body weight. We synthesize the evidence uh, for uh, the different uh, nutritional approaches, uh, including the macronutrient-based approaches, but focusing both on quantity and quality, the food-based approaches, and dietary pattern-based approaches, as just reviewed. These were synthesized and translated to provide an algorithm for the nutritional management of hyperglycemia and type 2 diabetes. This algorithm starts with a clinical assessment by a registered dietitian proceeds to the initiation of intensive healthy uh, behavior interventions uh, or energy restriction and increased physical activity to achieve maintain a healthy body weight. Then proceeds to uh, the provision of counseling on a diet that is best suited to the individual based on their values, preferences, and treatment goals using uh, the advantages and disadvantages of the evidence of advantages and disadvantages listed in table one which will be covered um, in the next slide. Both table one, sorry, this figure one, this algorithm, uh, figure one for this algorithm, and table one um, need to be uh, used uh, in conjunction. Um, if uh, the patient is unable to achieve target uh, based on this approach, um, then it is recommended that uh, one continue with the healthy behavior intervention and add uh, pharmacotherapy. In terms of <clears throat> Monitoring and follow-up uh, is recommended that timely adjustments to the healthy to healthy behavior interventions and or pharmacotherapy should be made to achieve um, the desired HbA1c target within two to three months for healthy behavior interventions and within three to six months for any combination uh, with uh, pharmacotherapy. This is the uh, companion table um, to um, the figure one algorithm. Uh, from the previous um, slide. This uh, reviews the, uh, presents the evidence that was reviewed um, for the um, various dietary approaches, including macronutrient based approaches, uh, dietary pattern based approaches, and food based approaches. 
It shows the advantages in terms of hemoglobin A1C lowering, CV benefit, and other advantages, and the disadvantages for the various approaches. The top part or the top panel of the table is for the macronutrient-based approaches. The mid part or the mid uh, panel, if you like, of the um, of the table is for um, dietary pattern-based approaches, and the bottom is for uh, the food-based approaches. Um, the idea is that there is no one best diet for diabetes. Adherence is one of the most important determinants of the success of any diet. One must get it past the mouth. It's incumbent upon the um, clinician to work um, directly with the patient to um, align the values, preference, and treatment goals of the patient with this evidence of advantages and disadvantages to select uh, a dietary approach uh, that will ensure uh, the greatest adherence um, over the long term. Recognizing the nutritional priorities uh, differ over the natural history of uh, diabetes, um, we synthesized and translated the evidence to provide a stage targeted uh, set of strategies uh, for type 2 diabetes going from pre-diabetes the far left of this table to, through to um, uh, advanced type 2 diabetes um, where the patients are um, on uh, insulin. Uh, what you can see is that the um, different uh, approaches or strategies um, vary in terms of their priority um, as one uh, proceeds uh, from left to right. Um, in particular one will note that uh, carbohydrate uh, distribution and consistency and portion control become progressively more important um, as the patient with type 2 diabetes um, advances in the disease process and uh, eventually uh, is come to require um, either basal insulin only or basal uh, bolus uh, therapy. 14 recommendations result from our uh, review of the evidence for the 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy. I'll go through each one in turn. One, people with diabetes should receive nutrition counseling by a registered dietitian to lower hem uh, hemoglobin A1C levels and to reduce hospitalization rates. Two, nutrition education may be delivered in either small group or one-on-one -on -one setting. Group education should incorporate adult education principles such as hands-on activities, problem solving, role playing, and group discussion. Three, individuals with diabetes should be encouraged to follow Eating Well with Canada's Food Guide in order to meet their nutritional goals. Four, in people with overweight or obesity with diabetes, a nutritionally balanced calorie reduced diet should be followed to achieve and maintain a lower healthy body weight. Five, an intensive healthy, diet, uh, healthy behavior intervention program combining dietary modification and increased physical activity may be used to achieve weight loss improve glycemic control and reduce CV risk. Six, in adults with diabetes, the macronutrient distribution as a percentage of total energy can range from 45 to 60% of carbohydrate, 15 to 20% of protein, and 20 to 35% of fat to allow for individualization of nutrition therapy based on preferences and treatment goals. Seven, people with type 2 diabetes should maintain regularity in timing and spacing of meals optimize glycemic control. Eight, to reduce the risk of CVD, adults with diabetes should avoid trans fatty acids and consume less than 9% of total daily energy from saturated fatty acids. Replacing these fatty acids with polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFAs, particularly mixed N3 and 6 sources, monounsaturated fatty acids or MUFAs from plant sources, whole grains or low GI carbohydrates. It must be acknowledged uh, here in terms of this recommendation and the discussion that uh, preceded it uh, that when replacing saturated fatty acids that not all food sources of saturated fatty acids have been reliably associated with harm. For example, a number of plant-based sources and dairy sources have not been associated um, with harm. So one must take this recommendation and the discussion we've had to this point uh, within that uh, Next. Nine, adults with diabetes may substitute added sugars, sucrose, high fructose corn syrup, fructose uh, or glucose 
with other carbohydrates as part of mixed meals up to a maximum of 10% of total daily energy intake provided adequate control of blood glucose, lipids, and body weight is maintained. 10, adults with type 1 and type 2 diabetes may aim to consume 30 to 50 grams per day of dietary fiber with a third or more. That represents 10 to 20 grams per day coming from soluble viscous dietary fiber to improve glycemic control, LDL cholesterol, and reduce cardiovascular risk. 11, adults with diabetes should select carbohydrate food sources with a low glycemic index or low GI to help optimize glycemic control, to improve LDL cholesterol, and to decrease CV risk. 12, the following dietary patterns may be considered in people with type 2 diabetes incorporating patient values, preferences, and treatment goals. These include a Mediterranean style dietary pattern, to reduce major CV events and improve glycemic control, a vegan or vegetarian dietary pattern to improve glycemic control, body weight, and blood lipids, including the primary lipid target, LDL cholesterol, and reduce myocardial infarction, dietary approaches to stop hypertension or the DASH diet dietary pattern to improve glycemic control, blood pressure, again, the primary um, lipid target, LDL cholesterol, and major CV events, dietary patterns emphasizing dietary pulses such as beans, peas, chickpeas, and lentils to improve glycemic control, systolic blood pressure and body weight, dietary patterns emphasizing fruit and vegetables to improve glycemic control and reduce CV mortality, dietary patterns emphasizing nuts to improve glycemic control and the, the uh, primary lipid target LDL cholesterol. 13, people with type 1 diabetes may be taught how to match insulin to carbohydrate quantity and quality, or they may maintain consistency in carbohydrate quantity and quality. 14, people with diabetes using insulin and or insulin secretagogues should be educated about the risk of hypoglycemia resulting from alcohol and should be advised on preventive actions such as carbohydrate intake and or insulin dose adjustments and increased blood glucose monitoring. Several key messages have been distilled from these recommendations. These include people with diabetes should receive nutrition counseling by a registered dietitian. Nutrition therapy can reduce hemoglobin A1C by one to 2% and when used with other components of diabetes care can further improve, improve clinical and metabolic outcomes. Reduced caloric intake to achieve and maintain a healthier body weight should be a treatment goal for people with diabetes with overweight or obesity. The macronutrient distribution is flexible within the recommended ranges and will depend on individual uh, values, preferences, and treatment goals. Replacing high glycemic index carbohydrates with low glycemic index carbohydrates in mixed meals has a clinically significant benefit for glycemic control in people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Consistency in spacing and intake of carbohydrate and in spacing and regularity in meal consumption may help control blood glucose and weight. Intensive healthy behavior interventions in people with type 2 diabetes can produce improvements in weight management, fitness, glycemic control, and CV risk factors. And finally, a variety of dietary patterns and specific foods have been shown to be of benefit in people with type 1 and type 2 diabetes. And people with diabetes should be encouraged to choose the dietary pattern that best aligns with their values, preferences, and treatment goals, allowing them to, to achieve the greatest adherence over the long term. The evidence has also been distilled to provide key messages specifically for people with diabetes. Uh, these messages include, it is natural to have questions about what food to eat. A registered dietitian can help you develop a personalized meal plan that considers your culture and nutritional preferences to help you achieve your blood glucose and weight management goals. Food is key in the management of diabetes and reducing the risk of heart attack and stroke. Try to prepare more of your meals at home and use fresh, unprocessed ingredients. Try to prepare meals and eat together as a family. This is a good way to model healthy food behaviors to children and teenagers, which could help reduce their risk of becoming overweight or developing diabetes. And finally, last two messages. 
with prediabetes and recently diagnosed type 2 diabetes, weight loss is the most important and effective dietary strategy if you are overweight or obese. A weight loss of 5 to 10% of your body weight may help normalize blood glucose levels. And there are many strategies that can help with weight loss. The best strategy is one that you are able to maintain and follow over the long term. So that concludes our presentation of the 2018 Clinical Practice Guidelines for Nutrition Therapy. If you would like more information, please visit um, the guidelines website at guidelines.diabetes.ca or download the app at diabetes.ca. Other contact information is provided here. Thank you for your attention.